In this video, I would like to answer the question whether it is possible, feasible, that a journal actually refuses to publish your research because of its conclusions. And of course, you would like to hear a no here, a clear, rigid no. But unfortunately, it's not that clear, usually. Because while you will not find anything in this direction when it comes to the you know, guideline for authors, any journal policies that may exist, it is well documented in research that if, for instance, there are non-significant findings in a statistical analysis, that this has a certain chance that it will be rejected by the reviewers. Now, this, of course, is a problem um, looking at the whole um, academic landscape. So there are increasingly more remedies towards that, all under the banner of open science. Basically, you want reviewers to judge, well, the research question, the research methods, the whole design and everything around that, but you don't actually want them to judge the results. Now, knowing that researchers are people, this is, you know, it's just sometimes a bit difficult because of course you as a reviewer, you do see the results if it's not blinded in some way. And this will guide your research because in the end, if you have a hypothesis and then there is a no result basically in terms of a non statistically not significant result could be a happen just by chance, right? That's how statistics works. But I think what most people would be biased towards is to say, well, maybe the hypothesis was bad in the first place, or maybe the research design was done in a way that you cannot see this type of effect, etc. Right? So then giving you a reason to actually reject your research. So in any case, as I said, there are remedies towards that. You can maybe submit your research without the findings. It's like a pre-registered study, such things do exist and they can certainly help with that. And um, also that it's always important, you know, to frame your whole paper um, into the direction of your findings, making it very clear from the beginning what this type of research contributes to and maybe what not. Because in the end, and that also has to do with the question you have been asking, the number one reason why journal papers or editors reject your paper is because there's a missing fit. So depending on how you frame your whole paper and how your conclusions actually advance the field of that journal, this has a, a huge effect on, your, on the probability that you're being published.